everybody and welcome to Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Today is going to be a packed day. If you haven't heard already, today is Midlands Gives, which means that nonprofits all around our community here in the Midlands of South Carolina are raising money to help support important nonprofits. And today we are going to be dishing out some very exciting features here for Z Learning. My name is Milo and today I'm actually behind the scenes at Riverbanks about to head into our animal hospital. Now with the help of all of you, we're going to get a very up close view of one of our animal procedures live here this morning, something we have never done before. We are very, very excited. Good morning, Alejandro and Caitlin. Nice to see you all tuning in. Christina, oh my gosh. Keegan and Caleb, nice to see you all this morning as well. Thank you all for tuning in. Not only is it Midlands Gives right here in our local community, but also around the globe, it is Giving Tuesday today, which means that we are going to show our love for all those nonprofits that mean something to us, that impact our communities. And we hope that when I say that, Riverbank Zoo and Garden comes to mind. Now I do have to mention quick, a quick update from our leaderboard because Midlands Gives officially began at 6 a.m. this morning and I am very excited to say that we just surpassed $12,000. Oh, good morning, everybody. That is amazing news. You all are making such a difference here for everybody here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Our team members, our animals, our plants that we care for, $12,000. That means that we are over halfway to our $20,000 goal between now and all the way to midnight tonight. So we have a lot more raising to do here for Midlands Gives, but I had to tell you that good news. $12,000 is amazing to think of. In fact, a huge shout out. In fact, we had a matching donor that specifically was going to match the first $4,000 raised. And I have to give a shout out to the cheerful giver for going ahead and matching those first $4,000 that brought us up to over $8,000 and now over $12,000 is amazing to think of. But thanks to the cheerful giver, an anonymous donor here in the area, we have to give a big shout out to you for supporting Riverbanks's mission. Now, all of you that are tuning in, just so you know, we are about to head actually into our animal hospital. I'm gonna slowly start making my way here. It's gonna get a little sunny. We're gonna squint our eyes for a second and head into the animal hospital. But good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see all of you tuning in. Oh, Jax, Ellie, I am so glad you were excited for the animal hospital. Like I said a second ago, we have never actually gone live in our animal hospital, but today we have a very special procedure that's actually going to happen with one of our animals that maybe you have seen here at the zoo before. In fact, we're going to have a couple of familiar faces. I do want to introduce you to a new face though too. She's actually our director of animal health here at Riverbanks. Her name is Martha. So she's kind of our head veterinary staff because we do have two full-time veterinary staff that actually hang out here at Riverbanks. Let's go ahead and hide in the shade here for a second. And we're also gonna be joined by two of our mammal keepers as well. But good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all tuning in. There's over 300 of you already. Cliff, thanks for tuning in live. It's nice to see y'all tuning in all the way from Minnesota. We're going to head into our animal hospital and thanks you all so much. Let's go ahead and turn around this camera. Let's knock on the door and see if they are ready for us to head on in. All right, everybody, let's go. They're ready for us. Oh my goodness. I am so glad I had the camera turned around and ready. I have to say good morning to our animal first and then we'll say hi to our people second. I went ahead and pulled up my mask behind the camera here, but I wanna introduce you to Mooney, one of our resident goats. In fact, let me introduce you to who she's hanging out with. This is Anna. You would be familiar with Anna if you tuned in for Zebra and Ostrich Z Learning, but I'm gonna pan quick and just do a quick room high. There's Martha. Wave to Martha. She's our director of animal health, of course. We're gonna get to know her a little bit better. Somebody in the background lurking too. <laughs> But I want to say hi to Jessica, too, of course. Hi, Jessica. We'll ignore the person in the background for now. <laughs> but back to Mooney. Anna, can you go ahead and kind of introduce us to Mooney? How old is she? What kind of goat is she? Yes, and this is Mooney. She's one of our Nigerian dwarf goats, and she's actually a year and a half old now. Wow, perfect. Okay, so Mooney walked all the way over from the farmyard to the animal hospital today to be specifically featured on Z Learning with all of you who are joining us today. And Martha here is actually gonna do kind of a quick once over of Mooney. We're gonna give her a quick exam. 
because there's a very particular reason why she's here today. Um, and we're actually gonna go ahead and feature that today for you live. But of course, Anna and Jessica, our mammal keepers, brought a big bucket full of snacks because those of you who've been to the doctor, which should be all of you, you've probably gotten a sucker or a sticker or a treat, something to tide you through your whole exam. Same idea here for Mooney, of course. <laughs> all right, Martha, we're ready if you're ready. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get a weight on Mooney. Now, those of you who are just joining, we are here in our animal hospital this morning. Mooney's going to get a quick weight for us. She's sitting around right around four, 24 kg. Perfect. All right. Mooney's doing a great job. I'm very impressed. I don't act this well-behaved at the doctor's office, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess I don't get a, a whole bushel full of leaves. Now, Martha's going to start doing that exam, and we're going to let her do her thing, of course. But Mooney's doing a great job, of course, kind of focusing in on all those special treats that she's getting, her extra special rewards. Now, we'll do this for our animals, of course, so that way they feel comfortable. We want them to have a, a good working relationship with our vet team, so that way they feel comfortable. But the least invasive that we can be, the better. I am so happy to see all of you tuning in this morning, especially for a very special feature. Martha, right now, our Director of Animal Care and Health, Animal Health specifically, <laughs> is doing a once-over on Mooney. Now, you might notice a couple of unique things about Mooney. In fact, Martha's going to explain them more here in a second. Um, but we're going to let her do the rest of her exam before we start pointing those out. Let's see if y'all have any great questions that are coming in. Jessica, I completely agree. It's a perfect name. <laughs> oh, we were, her question was wondering, what kind of leaves are she chewing on this morning? Sweet gum. Sweet gum leaves. So they're an approved browse item for our goats, which means that they're non-toxic to them. Now Martha's gonna go ahead and kind of check out. I'm so glad that we can get nice and up close. Okay, so Martha, tell us a little bit more about Mooney. She has kind of a unique appearance compared to our other goats. Explain a little bit more. Mooney has allergies. <laughs> and he first, first noticed this several months ago. She was losing hair around her eyes. You can kind of see she's still a little bit bald around yeah. her eye. And also along her ears. Sure. These are probably spots that she was rubbing because she was itchy. Yep. And then if you look at the side of her neck, her hair here is a little bit sparse. And that's because we had Mooney allergy tested. So we took her to the specialty clinic, South Carolina Veterinary Specialist and Emergency Center, and Dr. Watson, who's a dermatologist, shaved her hair here on her neck and actually injected her with little teeny amounts of what we call allergens, sure. what she might be reacting to. And we found out that she is allergic to a lot of things, um, and a lot of them are things we can't take out of her world. She's sure. allergic to some plants. She's actually allergic to hay. She reacted to mosquitoes and moths. Wow. And all of these things are, we just, we just can't take those out of her world. So pretty much everything that South Carolina is known for <laughs> is pretty much in her home. She's exposed to it anyway. But this is such a great example of our keepers having such a close working relationship with our animals to notice that kind of minute behavior change, that extra rubbing that she was doing. So those of you who have allergies at home, this is kind of similar. The only difference is Mooney doesn't have hands, so she can't rub her eyes. She can't necessarily scratch them herself, so she's rubbing maybe on the fencing, on her barn potentially, which is kind of why she has those kind of rub down bald spots. But of course, our keepers were aware of it, and then of course they let our veterinary team know. And that's why that allergy test then, from that bald spot, you can see all of her cute little wrinkles on her neck, <laughs> is why she was shaved down and she received an allergy test. Now, some of you at home this morning might have received an allergy test yourself. I haven't personally, but you know that with us, we're not big and hairy like some of our animals. So of course, shaving them down so that way they can see all those different reactions under the skin is extra important. I did see a question come through. Oh, they wanna know if they get shots. Well, that's a great question. That's exactly why we're here today. <laughs> we are so lucky that Mooney doesn't understand what we're saying because she is in store for a shot today. In fact, Martha, tell us a little bit more of kind of what shot she's receiving and why. We were able to work with a company that makes allergy shots, and they bundled up, I think, all 15 things that she reacted to. And she's been getting these shots every three days for the past several weeks. And we worked up to the most strong concentration. Sure, most so potent. She, yep, exactly. So she'll get this 
shot, and she'll be on the shots about every 10 days, okay. probably for the rest of her life, just to Perfect. help maintain her. Absolutely. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Let's get nice so shot. those of you who are listening, Mooney receives these every three days, so this is a very regular thing for her. You can tell that Mooney is very comfortable. I, I think I blinked. I might have missed that. <laughs> that happened very quick. That was all it was. And Mooney just kept eating the whole way through. And that's exactly our goal here at Riverbanks. When we provide that top quality animal care, our animal comfort and to make sure that it's a stress-free environment is very important for us. And you know what, Mooney? I think you're going to have to agree with that. That was, that was pretty stress-free for you. She's just wagging her tail, chewing on her food. She could really care less. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that Mooney joined us up here in the hospital today for a closer look for Z-Learning. She was a great patient. Now, I will say, just a shout-out quick for the veterinary team, not all of their patients are this easy <laughs> or this well-behaved or that we can hang out in this close proximity to, of course. A lot of our animals will actually do their procedures out in their habitats, in their bedrooms, in their areas where they're most comfortable. But Mooney's actually one of our individuals who's harness trained, so she's comfortable walking around the whole park, including coming here for her own exams. <laughs> so those of you who might have caught it, she did just get one of her allergy shots here for the next handful of days. So kind of a serum with all those different allergens to hopefully reduce her itchiness and to reduce those symptoms, I know I have seasonal allergies, so I feel for you, Mooney, and I bet a lot of you do too at home. All right, y'all, I think Mooney is ready to head back to the farmyard. All right, let's go home. It, it looks like she could stay here forever, though. <laughs> she is more than comfortable hanging out. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. So our two keepers are actually going to walk Mooney out. They left a little bit of a mess, but it doesn't look like she used the bathroom in here at all, which is perfect. But now she's going to take her time heading back over to the farmyard. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Anna. We'll see you again soon. And now I wanted to go ahead and kind of give the stage a little bit more to Martha to kind of tour us around a little bit. We're here in the animal hospital for the very first time. We have almost 500 people tuned in right now. No pressure, of course, Martha. <laughs> but we had a couple of quick questions that came in. Hayden was wondering, what plants is she allergic to? Can you go ahead and go over what she's allergic to real quick again? Uh, some of the plants. Whoa. <laughs> which of course is part of her diet. So a lot of things that just all over the environment here. So very unfortunate to be a goat with that many allergies that you have to be that exposed to. Thanks for that great question. Y'all are asking such great ones. We're actually going to let Martha, if you want to, let's go ahead and take a peek into surgery. We're here right in the heart of our veterinary hospital, which once again, I will say here, pause quick as Martha opens up the door. You might have noticed that big garage door and the door that Mooney walked in and out of. Most of our patients do not do that. <laughs> That's very unique. Martha had it pretty easy this morning, I'll be honest. Um, we wanted to keep it nice and simple, of course, for Z-learning. But a lot of our animals will actually do their procedures, like I said, in their bedrooms, by their habitats, where they're more comfortable. But tell us a little bit more about where we are right now, Martha. This is our surgery room. If you've taken your pet to the veterinarian, this is probably a lot like the setup they have for a smaller set of animals. So we can do surgery here on this table with the bright lights, but anything bigger, like Milo said, sure. we would do in the animal's home. Yeah, absolutely. So Martha, what would you say would be the biggest animal then you would comfortably do a procedure with in here? Uh, in here, probably the female gorillas. So sure. Maybe about 200, 250 pound animal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do bring animals up to about 500 pounds yep. up here. And beyond that, it's just too hard to lift them. So the grizzly bears, anything like that, sure. we would definitely do in their dens. Absolutely. Which not only makes it easier on our staff, but it also makes it easier on the animals. Like I said, the less stress, the better for them. But you can kind of see the anesthesia equipment over in the corner. Oh, Martha, can you actually show me? I have to point this out. The big cone. Explain why there is a traffic cone back here. <laughs> so when we start to anesthetize a lot of our animals, they get a gas anesthesia that they breathe through a face mask. But mm -hmm. they don't make face masks for a lot of our animals. <laughs> it is not one size fits all here at the zoo. <laughs> And then we will put this over the lion's nose. Very creative. <laughs> I love it. It wasn't a construction site in here, y'all. That was for anesthesia for our lions. It was very specifically designed for lions. Absolutely. 
Now, I did get a question in from Aaron. He was wondering what species is the most challenging to take care of here at the zoo? I know it's a hard question because at the end of the day, Martha, you and your team actually care for all 2,000 of our residents here. And of course that's going to range. It's not gonna be necessarily one individual, but kind of what is a challenge, I guess, in your day that you kind of experience? I think the hardest thing for us is that so many of the animals that we work on have to be asleep sure. while we work on them for safety and to reduce their stress. And the medications and the doses and how to manage them while they're asleep is very challenging. Absolutely, because it's all that science is getting an accurate weight, making sure that we know how much they need to have and receive. But then, of course, you can't necessarily ask them what they're doing. And some of the animals you can't even get necessarily extremely close to just for our safety and, of course, their safety, too. Yeah. Such a great point. All right, let's go ahead and take a look through the rest of the hospital. Thankfully, we're nice and empty right now. We have the place to ourselves. Like I said, Mooney's already headed back over to the farm area. We're kind of in our general exam area where we can do a lot of different procedures in here. Um, but Martha specifically wanted to show us our x-ray room. More officially, radiology. I love that. Thanks. Um, and we're very lucky we have digital x-ray here. So when we take an x-ray of an animal, it comes up on the computer screen. So we get to see the image right away. And we can also play with it if we need to make it bigger or smaller. This is one of our radiated tortoises. Oh. Um, and we were checking to see if she had any eggs that she was getting ready to lay, and she does. You can see she's I was gonna got say, I think that's gonna be four, a yes, yeah. <laughs> four eggs in there, and once she lays her eggs, we'll bring her back up and take an x-ray just to make sure all the eggs Absolutely. have passed. So when you think of our animals, all of you who are tuning in, I know a lot of times when you think of veterinary care, you think of the mammals, kind of like Mooney, or animals that are similar to your pets at home, say cats or dogs, kind of like our big cats but all of our animals receive veterinary care on a regular basis, and that includes animals like our tortoises. In fact, you can check out this x-ray, you can see all those different bones. It might be a little challenging with the glare, but I will say this digital system is way better. <laughs> and our, our, our veterinary team are not going to apologize for the glare because this is a way more sophisticated system for them to use. Now, this is another great example. So Martha, your day could include anything from as big as our giraffe, all the way down to a gecko in the aquarium and reptile complex. <laughs> yeah, so we have to take care of pretty much everything we have here. So we do the fish, we do the geckos, we do the tarantulas, which give me the heebie-jeebies, but <laughs> I do it. Um, you do it for the animals anyway, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, so we, Michael, our other veterinarian and I, are very much generalists. We can treat anything we have here and then sometimes we work with specialists like we Absolutely. do with Mooney yep. who have extra skill sets and can help us do things that are a little more specific. So Hannah, to answer your question then, yes, Martha does do exams on the fish. Sometimes that's done underwater, sometimes it's done with anesthesia. It just kind of depends on the individual, of course, and kind of what the ailment is. But of course, we're working closely with those animal care staff. Jen had a quick question though, and Emma was wondering, are those actual eggs? Yeah. Yes, they are. Those of you who we just kind of breeze past, yes, those are actual eggs inside of one of our radiated tortoises. But Jen was wondering, does the x-ray hurt the eggs? It's a great question. It is a good question. One x-ray would not do harm, sure. but you definitely do want to make sure that you're not going crazy. So Megan, there's four eggs in here. You can kind of see one, two, three, four. Um, we might give you an update on this individual. It just kind of depends. But of course, this is a part of this individual's health. It's not necessarily focused on the new babies that might be coming. It's more about how her health is going as far as carrying those eggs. Um, but like Martha said, it wouldn't be an x-ray regularly, of course, to kind of limit them. Oh, Andrea, I want to set a big thank you to Martha and your team for taking care of the amazing animals. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we're going to kind of head on out of radiology back into the exam area. We're getting a lot of different questions. Melissa was wondering, do we have volunteers in our animal hospital? We actually have a team of staff members. Martha, we have six staff members. Is that correct? That's right. So six staff members just dedicated to animal hospital and animal health, which includes two veterinary staff, two vet techs, and two keepers. Martha was nodding her head along with me. I was going through all of those different ones. So six full-time staff members just devoted to animal care and health specifically. Now I wanna do a quick 
another overview. Oh, Martha, actually, can we talk about these real quick? I know you had talked about, not necessarily specifically this equipment, but the reason why I want to point it out is it's on wheels. <laughs> you mentioned before we got started this morning, everything here in the hospital is mobile. Yeah. So it is able to go anywhere through the zoo. Why is that? I mean, we kind of talked about going to all those different animal areas. I know you've done procedures on sea lions or gorillas and everything is portable. Does that mean x-rays are portable too and all those different things? Everything we have is portable. So wow. we can take the anesthesia machines. That's why they're on wheels. Uh, we can take x-ray out with the computers and get those really good images. Our ultrasound is portable. We've done surgery out in the animal areas. We are very, very flexible. And Absolutely. Very, very mobile. Okay, now, Martha, you got a specific shout out. Jamie was wondering, what kind of training and education do you specifically have to be a zoo veterinarian for all these different species of animals? Uh, so it's the four years of veterinary school. Yep. And then usually an internship and or a residency, which is extra training after school. And then hopefully you get lucky and get a job here. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Martha specifically has kind of been specializing in let's say exotic animals, lots of different species, not necessarily just domestic individuals, but lots of different wild animals for years and years. In fact, she's worked at multiple different facilities, but here at the zoo, she takes care of over 2000 different animal residents. Ooh, Gunner asked a really good question. I have to give a shout out to Gunner, age 12. How do you handle the venomous snakes during an exam? Uh, I don't. <laughs> Ooh, good answer. I love that, Martha. So Martha avoids it. <laughs> Sure. Uh, plastic pipes. Yep. And they coax the snake to put its head up into the pipe, and then they grab the snake's body so he can't back out. Perfect. And yep. that way I can see the snake's face and get a good look at its whole body, but we don't have to worry about getting bitten. What a good point. So there's lots of different creative ways, whether it's a traffic cone for our lions or clear pipes for our snakes. You have to get creative in veterinary medicine, especially when you're working with lots of different sizes of animals. Well, Martha, I cannot say a big enough thank you to you and all the amazing work that you do. Thanks so much for joining us for live this morning and giving us a quick tour. It was our first time here in the animal hospital and hopefully not our last. Exactly. We'll hopefully come back. But we are actually going to head on out. Big thank you, of course, to Martha. We're going to head on back out through the door because I want to give you all an update again on the importance of today. Now we did kind of a quick whirlwind tour with Martha and some of our mammal keepers as well. Now that I'm out of the building and kind of on my own, let me go ahead and pull my mask down so you can hear me a little bit better. But today is a very, very special day here at Riverbanks. We're in the back of our animal hospital now. And I wanted to remind you that today is Midlands Gives, which means that we are raising a whole lot of money to help support Riverbanks' mission to care for all of our different animal residents and to provide a, a facility for you all to kind of travel the world. We look forward to reopening, hopefully sooner rather than later. It's breaking our heart during our temporary closure that you all can't come to the zoo and connect with us, but we're doing it here virtually today and trying to bring the zoo to all of you. Now, this morning we went ahead and started with a first for Riverbanks. We've never been into our animal hospital. You all had great questions. Once again, big shout out to Sam and Jordan from our communications department. They've been responding to your questions and we'll go ahead and catch all of those as we go. And I will say too, today is gonna to be a jam packed day. Not only is it Midlands Gives, but this is our first of three different live features that we are doing today. So we started out 10 o'clock, our animal hospital, but join me again at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, noon, we are going to head into the aquarium for a big underwater feeding session. Those of you who've seen it before on a typical visit to Riverbanks when we were open, I want you to go ahead and head under the water for a nice relaxing lunchtime break at noon today. Join me in our aquarium and then put on your radar for later in the afternoon, two o'clock this afternoon, we're gonna do another first here at Riverbanks. Maybe some of you have been lucky enough to catch it before, but our American alligator, that big, huge alligator that lives here at the zoo, we're gonna get a very up close view from him and actually maybe even provide him a quick snack. 
Now, all of you who kept on tuning in through Z Learning, I have to give you a big thank you. But it's not goodbye until tomorrow. It's just goodbye until noon. So join me at 12 o'clock and we will see you there for our next feature. In the meantime, go ahead and click the link in our caption. Head to midlandsgives.org backslash Riverbank Zoo to go ahead and see if we can exceed our expectations of raising $20,000 today to support Riverbank Zoo and Garden. Thank you all so much and we'll see you again at 12 o'clock.